Hello friends, today we're going to talk about Christmas, namely a little Christmas miracle, the arrival of the microphone Jesus lying in his fine little manger. What a miracle. Or rather, it's my wife who found a charity auction and knows exactly what I want. This has been donated by the Polish radio. It's a Philips EL6011 crystal microphone from the 50s. But it might not be in working order. In this photo you can quite clearly see that the microphone capsule has been pushed in and it's not straight anymore. Those lines should be aligned with the little protection in the front. Has this gotten a knock? Is it broken? We don't know. So uh, let's open it up and figure it out. Information about this microphone on the internet is quite scarce and uh, sometimes slightly self-contradictory. Some sources claim this is a tube microphone that is clearly and obviously incorrect. Um, but uh, I think it is a crystal microphone at least. The capsule which you will see later, looks very much like it's a crystal capsule. It is, as you can see, fairly easy to uh, open. It's not uh, a lot of stuff going on. A little bit of violence was needed, but uh, that was it. And uh, what I missed showing you here, what I didn't get on video, is what was inside. Because when I turned the microphone over, loads of brown crumbly dust fell out. And that's actually good news, because that's foam that has disintegrated with time. So the reason the microphone capsule was not in the correct position is that the foam has disintegrated and the foam was holding it in place. And it's no longer in place. So I will have to replace this foam with something else. But first I need to clean off as much as possible of the old foam. I tried all sorts of cleaning fluid. Um, I don't remember now if it was alcohol or acetone that worked the best, but it was either or of them. But I tried pretty much everything I had. And to be honest, nothing worked great. Not even alcohol and acetone. On the paper towel here you can see more of this brown dust. It went everywhere. All the cables seemed uh, well connected and in good order on the inside. Behind that brown plate there is what I think is a tra output transformer. Uh, so all that remains now is to attach new foam pads. It's just a matter of uh, figuring out how many of these pads to use. I don't remember if I used three or four in the end. But uh, whatever fits for you and you have to have the capsule in the right direction because the cables need to fit as well. The cables are of course uh, quite long because you need to be able to open and service it. So um, that's good but uh, makes it a little bit difficult to actually put it together again. Uh, whoops, seems I only used two of these foam pads. I misremembered completely there. Anyway, it's just putting everything together and then adjusting these uh, grids so they are uh, aligned. So, are we done? No, because look at this strange connector. It looks kind of like an XLR, but it isn't. I have been spending a lot of time on the internet trying to figure out what connector that is, but it seems like the official name simply is a Philips microphone connector. And uh, I have to replace that because you cannot buy anything that fits. And uh, also it's kinda in a bad state. This screw here doesn't properly work. It pro doesn't properly grip, uh, but it's in the way so you can't open this uh, connector unless you get this screw out. That was very annoying. But fine, I somehow managed to get that little screw out and then I could open the connector um, and take a look at the insides and figure out that actually all that work were for nothing because what I need to do is cut off the cable. Dirty deed was done. 
all we need to do is to attach a new connector. I decided to use an XLR because most of my microphones use an XLR, but this does not need phantom power, so uh, you can actually just connect a normal quarter inch jack if you want to. And once you have done that, you realize that you forgot to put on the outer casing of the microphone connector onto the cable, so you have to desolder everything and do everything again. And then you fiddle and stare and scratch your head at how a new trick connector is supposed to be put together, and you finally figure it out. And then it's all done, and it's time to test if the microphone actually works. And yes, I'm happy to report that it works. It works perfectly. It might not be the best sounding microphone in the world, but it certainly is one of the more good looking ones. It looks like Buck Rogers or something. So cool! So thanks again to everybody who has subscribed. Uh, it's pretty crazy actually. And uh, thanks to my wife for giving me this lovely microphone. See you next time!